This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Hi. My name is Travis McVeigh. I'm an anesthesiologist from Dallas, Texas. I host a podcast called Thank You Notes at Ars Longa Media. Showing gratitude to people just makes me feel good, and I want to share the practice of thank you notes with everybody who listens. I write thank you notes to people and then bring them on the show to read it to them. Past guests have included my high school teachers, my friends, other physicians, and a couple of internet celebrities. I will also be doing episodes that explore the science behind gratitude practices to demonstrate to everybody the actual tangible benefits of practicing gratitude. Listen everywhere you get podcasts and check out the extras on my social media accounts. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Inside the Board Study Smarter series dedicated to helping you learn to think like a question writer so you can study smarter, not harder, and succeed on your exam. Hey, it's Patrick. Welcome to the Inside the Board Study Smarter series or mini series, I guess, for the USMLE Step 2 Internal Medicine Edition. Today we're going through some renal questions. If you haven't heard already, our iOS beta app is out now in the App Store. It features some meditations to help, you know, quell some of your anxiety during med school. It has all of our podcasts, including an enhanced version of USMLE Step 2 Secrets, and of course, our all audio cue bank. So if you want to study on the go so you can redeem some of your time for, you know, life stuff, then click the link in the show notes or go to the App Store and search inside the boards, all one word. This is a beta version, and I wanted to give you a taste exactly of what that means. So in this episode first, I am going to present a question thanks to Online MedEd, who is powering our USMLE Step 2 All Audio QBank. And then after that, there are a few robot questions, as it were, which is basically like Alexa reading uh, uh, different practice questions. I'm hoping you'll see that it's not too bad, but no, we will be replacing all of those robot recordings over the next couple months. Plus, we have a bunch of other question readers, so you don't have to put up with my boring monotone scanning speech and other verbal idiosyncrasies, if you will. So please download our app, send us your feedback, because we're already working on a more expansive version that will be available to both Android and iOS users, hopefully out sometime this summer. Please sign up for our email list. Just go to insidetheboards.com. We've got a lot of special announcements coming up, including a few resources we want to share with you to help during your dedicated Step 1 prep time. And of course, our contest where you can win the cost of your USMLE or Comlex exam registration fee, that is if you're a first through fourth year U.S. medical student. So check out InsideTheBoards.com, sign up for our email list. Thanks for your support. Here we go. A 60-year-old female presents with a chief complaint of urinary urgency, frequency, and dysuria. She was empirically treated with a three-day course of ciprofloxacin and then a seven-day course with amoxicillin clavulinate, but symptoms have persisted. She has a 25-pack year history of smoking, her vital signs are within normal limits, and her physical examination is normal. A urinalysis reveals red blood cells and white blood cells, though it is not grossly bloody. There are no casts. What is the best next step in the management of this patient? A. A urine culture. B. CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. C. Cystourethroscopy. 
or D, intravenous pilogram? And the correct answer is choice C, cystourethroscopy. This patient has urgency, frequency, and dysuria. She was treated for a UTI and then a complicated UTI based on this vignette. Urinalysis reveals intact red blood cells and white blood cells. The vignette specifies that there are no casts present, which is important. Recall that casts indicate the red or white blood cell is coming from the kidney tubule. In contrast, if whole white or red blood cells are found without casts, they are not coming from the kidney tubules. Irritative bladder symptoms such as urgency, frequency, and dysuria together with hematuria signify the most likely diagnosis, which is bladder cancer. The patient's age and smoking history should also be a clue. The first step in the evaluation of a potential malignancy is cystourethroscopy to identify the lesion and to get a biopsy. The most attractive distractor here is probably urine culture. This would be the right answer if you thought we weren't just giving the right antibiotics to treat the UTI. The presence of red cells makes it less likely to be infectious and indicates something more serious. If the vignette gave a nursing home patient with a permanent Foley, which are risk factors for having a resistant organism, then yes, this would be the most appropriate next step in the management of this patient. But this picture, smoking, white cells, red cells, irritative symptoms, indicates a process that is most likely not infectious in nature. In any case, excluding malignancy must be the next step if antibiotics fail in the setting of this patient's constellation of symptoms. All right, a little bit of commentary on that last question. What do you need to know? Microscopic hematuria. First step, per usual, history and physical examination, plus or minus labs to rule out benign causes, such as infection, maybe it's a younger person who's menstruating, uh, vigorous exercise can do it, medical renal disease, um, trauma or recent uh, urology procedures, for instance. But once those have been ruled out, for instance, a patient is treated with antibiotics for a presumed urinary tract infection, but the symptoms don't go away. But here's the kicker. All patients who present with risk factors for urinary tract malignancy, you know, like the irritated voiding symptoms, tobacco use, chemical exposure. Oh, and don't forget that certain aromatic amines like benzidine, which are used in the dye industry, so dye workers, uh, this is a risk factor for bladder cancer as well. But remember, we were asked what's the best next step in the management of this patient. Now, the next step often is going to be imaging of some sort to look at the uh, urinary tract. The option that we got here was a CT of the abdomen and pelvis. That's not specific enough because what you actually need is a CT urography to evaluate the renal parenchyma and rule out a renal mass, uh, as well as look at the urothelium of the upper tracts. So with that answer choice being too general, the best next step listed here is going to be the cystoscopy. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, we're just going to take a quick break to tell you about our sponsor, Common Bond. Common Bond is one of our supporters. They're excited to announce a new in-school loan for medical students designed to save you thousands of dollars over the federal Grad Plus loan. Why? Because you guys have great potential. The loan's interest rate starts at 5.56%. To learn more, go to commonbond.co slash ITB. And thanks for supporting our sponsors. All right, now we're back to the content. Alexa, teach me some renal stuff. A 50-year-old male presents with heart failure exacerbation. He has gained 20 pounds from his dry weight. He is compliant with his medications which consist of valsartan and carvedilol. He is given IV furosemide and diuresis 2 liters. He still has jugular venous distension and pulmonary crackles. His labs now show potassium of 3.2 and creatinine of 0.8. What is the next best step in management? Is it A. Add HCTC B. Add lisinopril 
C. Administer potassium chloride. Or is it answer choice, D. Stop furosemide. And the correct answer is Choice C. Administer potassium chloride. This patient is receiving a loop diuretic, which can cause hypokalemia. However, he still needs to remove several liters of fluid to treat his CHF. Stopping furosemide would prevent further decrease of potassium, but would further exacerbate his CHF. This is a common scenario in the hospital setting. To correct his hypokalemia and allow continued treatment of his CHF, we need to replete his potassium while the infusions continue. All right, Alexa, give us another one. A 58-year-old male presents with abdominal pain and a history of diverticulosis. His pain is in the lower left quadrant, which started last night. He has a fever and is tender to palpation of the abdomen. A CT is obtained, which displays diverticulitis. A 1 cm renal cyst was also noted. It is on the lower pole, is not septated, has no loculations, and is thin-walled. He has no previous imaging to compare to. What is the next best step in management? Is it A. Ultrasound in 3 months B. Kidney biopsy C. Surgical resection Or is it answer choice, D. Reassurance And the correct answer is Choice D. Reassurance This patient appears to have a simple cyst with no associated symptoms. This has a low risk of malignancy. Current guidelines state simple cysts do not require follow-up or further imaging. Reassurance is appropriate for this patient. All right, Alexa, one more. A 22-year-old female presents to the urgent care center complaining of dysuria, increased urinary frequency, and pelvic pain. Urinalysis is positive for nitrites and leukocyte esterase. She is diagnosed with an uncomplicated UTI and given a five-day course of trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole as well as phenazopyridine. Three days later she comes back complaining of a rash. She endorses a prodrome of a low-grade fever and cough before noticing a rash. On physical exam, there are several flat, irregular, targetoid, dusky, purpuric macules on the trunk. There are also what appear to be ruptured bullae on the mucous membranes of her mouth. What is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A. Stevens-Johnson syndrome B. Erythema multiforme C. Drug-induced urticaria Or is it answer choice, D. Staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome And the correct answer is Choice A, Stevens-Johnson syndrome. This is a classic description of Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Dusky, irregular, flat purpuric appearing macula that are most common on the trunk. It is also important to remember that Stevens-Johnson frequently involves the oral mucosa as well as the conjunctiva of the eyes. Recall that Stevens-Johnson involves less than 20% of the total body surface area. While toxic epidermal necrolysis involved greater than 30% of TBSA, treatment always involves stopping the offending agent and admission to the hospital for supportive care. A very wide array of medications and infections are associated with Stevens-Johnson syndrome, but some of the most common are sulfonamides, penicillin, phenidoin, herpes simplex, and mycoplasma. Erythema multiforme can resemble SJS. However, the lesions of erythema multiforme are often raised and have more regular borders. Recall that erythema multiforme presence as raised, erythematous target-shaped macules that have dusky, purple centers on acral sites. That's it for today. Next time you hear from us, it's going to be the launch of our USMLE Step 1 Study Smarter series. Episodes coming at you all the time from uh, mid-April until mid-June. So please tell your friends. Thanks to Augustine Beeman, who is my 12-year-old son, a.k.a. 
DJ Bezo for providing the music to this podcast. And not to beat a dead horse, but please go download our app.